Hello friends, uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'll be talking about tall columns. This will be part one of my discussions on tall columns. And what am I going to discuss in this? So I uh, first I will be introducing tall columns to you. And then I will also tell you about the stresses that are to be considered while designing tall columns. So we will just know what are the stresses. Details of all these stresses, their analysis, I am going to do in my uh, coming videos. So in this particular video, let us understand what are tall columns and let us understand if you have to design those tall columns, what stresses have to be considered uh, for the design purpose. Okay, to begin with, uh, let us know uh, what is the use of tall columns in chemical industries. Uh, everyone will agree that uh, the two most important chemical engineering operations are distillation and uh, the other one is absorption. Distillation and, uh, distillation and absorption, these are the two most important chemical engineering operations. And in almost every chemical industry, uh, you will find these operations. These operations, uh, they are usually carried out in tall columns, tall cylindrical columns. They are usually carried out in tall cylindrical columns. So for carrying out distillation, you have distillation columns. Uh, for carrying out absorption, you have absorption columns. Apart from this, sometimes uh, chemical reactions are carried out in multi-stage reactors. And multi-stage reactors, these are also tall cylindrical columns. But mostly, you have distillation columns, you have absorption columns, and these are tall cylindrical columns. Now, uh, these tall cylindrical columns, they may be self-supporting or you may need external support uh, for them. So, some tall columns, they are designed as self-supporting columns and some need external support. As far as self-supporting columns are concerned, self-supporting tall column is concerned, it is a relatively new concept. It is, it is a relatively new concept that is used in modern chemical industries. Okay, now for this tall columns, uh, the fact is height to diameter ratio, the height to diameter ratio is relatively high. So if you talk about tall columns, tall cylindrical columns, uh, the height to diameter ratio is relatively high. And for this reason, all most of the tall columns, they are erected in open space instead of installing them in uh, buildings uh, these tall columns they are erected in open space and one of the reason for this is their uh, height to diameter ratio is relatively high if you are erecting them in open space then these tall columns will be subjected to the action of wind and you need to consider this while designing those columns uh, tall columns, they are provided with accessories. So when you have tall columns like distillation columns, absorption columns, all of these columns will be having certain uh, accessories associated with them. Which are these accessories? So you have insulation. Uh, some distillation column may need insulation in order to save energy, in order to prevent energy loss. Uh, piping system is always, always associated with these columns. Then you have auxiliary equipment like uh, a condenser, condensers, then you have uh, manholes, uh, ladders, platforms. So all this kind of auxiliary equipment, they are also associated with tall columns. And apart from this, tall columns also have certain internal accessories like trays if you are talking about tray columns you have trays down comers so all these are internal accessories that will always be there in uh, those columns if you are talking about pack columns there will be packing for example 
but in my discussion i'll be sticking to uh, design of tray columns design of tall tray columns and for tra tray columns you have trays uh, inside the column and uh, uh, that will have to be considered all all these internal accessories then uh, insulation piping systems auxiliary equipment they have to be considered while designing tall columns okay one more thing that you have to note over here is tall columns most of the time tall columns may be operated under severe conditions what are these severe conditions you they may be operated at high temperatures they may be operated under high pressure they may be operated under high vacuum plus the material that uh, is processed in them the that material may be toxic it may be flammable it may be hazardous and it may be highly corrosive so you need to consider all these severe conditions while designing tall columns you have to take care of this severe conditions if you have to design uh, tall columns your design will be perfect your design will be uh, you can say better if you are considering all the operating conditions all severe operating conditions all the materials uh, that may be toxic flammable hazardous highly uh, or highly corrosive you need to consider all this while designing these columns theek hai now let me show you a simple schematic of a typical tray column so let me first complete the drawing and then i will talk about or rather i will describe it theek hai so you have the cylindrical shell for uh, cylindrical shell then you have tray there will be many such trays then with each tray there will be a down comer associated with it then you have support over here it is curved support then vapor outlet vapor uh, it uh, will be coming out of this opening and it will be taken to a overhead condenser condenser i have not shown over here but condenser will always be there uh, with distillation column uh, then you have various platforms platforms located at various heights for example over here one platform is located then with each platform you have railings then you have ladder uh, to reach to those platforms we need ladder so ladders are also provided uh, they may be open ladder or they may be um, ladder in a casing so that is a different thing we, we will talk more about it in uh, while discussing this in details for time being you just understand what are the accessories associated with a typical tall column and then you uh, certain manholes are provided in order uh, for uh, for the purpose of cleaning or maintenance manholes or uh, manholes are also provided uh, then you have uh, the outlet for bottom product for example uh, in case of distillation column Uh, the bottom product will be taken out at the bottom so you need outlet for that um, as i said earlier uh, you, you also have the vapor outlet from which vapor will be taken out and they will be sent to the condenser so a typical uh, tall column which depicts all important accessories associated with it now you can see in this diagram so after knowing about tall columns now we can understand that design of tall columns need consideration of stresses due to not only internal pressure not only due to external pressure not only due to vacuum but we also need to consider stresses that may come into picture due to dead weights wind forces seismic forces and if you ignore any one of this it may lead to the structural failure failure of the 
column, structural failure of the tall column. So the point is, whenever you have to design a tall column, it is not sufficient to just consider internal pressure, external pressure or vacuum. We also need to consider dead wets associated with the column, wind forces acting on the column, seismic forces acting on the column. So if you are erecting column in earthquake prone areas, then you have to take care of this. The point is, if you are ignoring any of this then your design may not be a good design it may result in failure of the uh, column structural failure of the column so the point is you just you have to consider all the loads that may induce stresses in the column when, uh, when you have to design a typical tall column Okay, now let me talk about uh, the stresses. Uh, the second point for discussion in this video was stresses. Stresses that are induced in the wall of a tall column. So let me talk about those stresses. So this will be just an introduction to the stresses. More details I'll be discussing in my coming videos. So for our understanding, I have taken uh, the same schematic diagram of the tall column which I just discussed. Uh, internal pressure, external pressure or vacuum. So these, uh, you can say forces, these loads, they are going to induce circumferential, axial and radial stresses. So if you think of internal pressure as a load, if you think external pressure as a load or vacuum as a load, then these loads they are going to induce circumferential stresses axial stresses and radius radial stresses in the wall of a typical tall column we i'm going to talk more about this in my coming videos then dead weights which are this uh, dead weights whatever dead weights uh, those that will be associated with tall columns they are going to induce compressive stresses uh, within the wall of a tall column. So what are these dead weights? One is self weight of the column, weight of the column itself, then weight of the column internals like trays, down comers, etc. Then weight of the liquid on trays. So if you have tray column, if you are talking about tray columns during the operation, on each tray there will be a certain liquid holdup and weight of that liquid due to the holdup you need to consider. So weight of the liquid on the trays, then weight of the insulation if it is a, if it is an insulated column, then weight of accessories that are attached to the columns like platforms, ladders, etc. So these dead beds they are going to induce compressive stresses in the wall of a typical tall column and you need to consider those stresses you need to consider those dead weights which are going to induce compressive stresses in the wall of a typical tray column uh, wind action as i said uh, since tall columns have relatively high height to diameter ratio usually these tall columns they are installed in open space and in open space they are subjected to wind action so wind action uh, that also have to be taken into consideration so i have i'm showing you uh, a typical column that is subjected to wind so wind is blowing and it is acting on uh, the column like this and uh, uh, the load will be uh, you can say the variation of the load along the height of the column is now you can sh uh, see over here. So it is maximum at the bottom and it is minimum at the top. So under the action of wind, uh, the column acts like a cantilever beam, a beam that is supported at one end. It is a cantilever beam. So under the action of the wind, the column is acting as a cantilever beam and the resulting bending moment uh, due to this, it is uh, the action of the wind 
wind forces are going to induce bending moment uh, about the base of the column so this bending moment induces tensile and compressive stresses in the wall of that column okay one more thing so if you have a column and wind is blowing from this direction so this side of the column will be set uh, will be called up wind side and this side of the column will be called down wind side so on the up wind side wind forces wind load is going to induce tensile stresses whereas on the down side down wind side of the column the wind forces or wind load is going to induce compressive stresses theek hai so wind action or the load wind action also have to be considered while designing tall columns so wind load uh, under the action of wind load the column acts like a cantilever beam and therefore bending moment is uh, induced and this bending moment due to this bending moment tensile and compressive stresses are induced in the wall of the column and on the up wind side of the column where uh, you can see over here uh, on the up wind side of the column tensile stresses will be induced due to the wind load whereas on the down wind side compressive stresses will be induced in the wall of the column theek okay. hai now let us continue further uh then uh, you also have uh, eccentricity that will come into picture and it eccentricity is going to come into picture due to irregular load distribution we will talk more about it in uh, our uh, future videos for time being you just understand eccentricity if there is irregular load distribution it will be mainly due to externally attached uh, you can say weights and if these weights are irregularly distributed then they, they they will give rise to eccentricity and eccentricity uh, will be due to as i said due to weights that are externally attached to the column like piping platforms ladders etc so this eccentricity it due to this eccentricity stresses are induced in the column walls you also have to consider that then the other source of stresses is offset piping and wind load and uh, this can produce a torque about the longitudinal axis about the longitudinal axis of the column and uh, shear stress is due to this torque shear stress is induced in the wall of the column so you also have to take care about uh, take care of this offset piping and wind load which is going to produce a torque about the longitudinal axis of the column where is the longitudinal axis so we are talking about this axis so about this longitudinal axis a torque will be produced and this torque is going to ultimately result in shear stress and you have to take care about take care of that uh, so due to the above mentioned torque um, shear stress will be produced then uh, if the column is located in an earth quick prone area then you have to take care of seismic forces also because seismic forces by chance if there is a earthquake so under the action of the earthquake uh, seismic forces will be acting on the column and this seismic forces are going to induce stresses that uh, has to be considered that has to be taken care of while designing column apart from this you also have residual stresses Uh, that will come into picture due to fabrication procedures like cold forming bending cutting welding etc etc so all kind kinds of this procedures will result in residual stresses that may be there in the wall of the column so you also if they are uh, sufficiently high you have to consider them while designing tall columns so at the end of this discussion let me tell you if you have to design a tall column you need to consider stresses due to various loads not only due to internal pressure external pressure or vacuum 
you also have to consider various dead beds you also have to consider wind load you also have to consider eccentricity which may be uh, coming into picture due to irregular load distribution you also have to take care of offset piping and wind load uh, which is going to give rise to torque about the longitudinal axis and which is then ultimately going to induce shear stress in the wall of the column and then seismic forces also have to be considered if uh, the column is to be installed in those areas where earthquake is uh, a possibility so stresses due to this seismic forces you have to consider while designing the column then fabrication processes various fabrication pro procedures like cold forming bending cutting welding this may induce residual stresses in uh, the column wall and if they are sufficiently large you have to consider them while designing the tall column so with this i end my discussion for uh, this particular uh, um, topic where I have introduced tall columns to you and then I have also introduced stresses which have to be considered while designing tall columns. In my coming videos, I will be talking more about the stresses, how to take care of stresses uh, while designing tall columns. For time being, thanks for watching my video. Thanks for being with me. Please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Tell your friends to subscribe to my YouTube channel and be with me for knowing more about chemical engineering. For time being, thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.